This is James Calm, the guy on the bike. Welcome you all back for another half-ass production. Today we're coming to you from Metro Pictures at 519 West 25th Street. We want to go up and see a very provocative show by this gentleman, Walter Robinson. And the title of this show is 80s paintings. Now, anybody that's in the New York art scene has been aware of Walter Robinson for years. He and some of his friends, one of them was Ed Dieck, started Art Right magazine back in the 70s. And he was also a big mover in the uh, East Village art scene, along with Carla McCormick. This is artist model 24 by 24. And Richard and Peter. And Walter's been very active, not only in painting, but uh, writing and editing, I'm sure if you spend any time online at all, you go by artnet.com. He's the editor-in-chief there. This is untitled. 18 by 12. And sisters. I think that he kind of fits into the category with the picture artists that Douglas Crimp curated for a show at Artist Space back in 1978. But I think Walter is a little more zesty, a little more uh, tangy. Most of the picture artists were pretty blasé. They wanted to uh, subdivert and distance the image. I think Walter actually enjoyed this and uh, believes in a certain amount of sensual paint handling and color. This is untitled. Acrylic on twin bed sheet. Charlie Finch talks about how there appears to be a relationship between this work and uh, the work of people like Elizabeth Payton, Karen Kalimnik. But Walter was ahead of all those guys by about 20 years. This is the Seven Sisters. They said that uh, a lot of the inspiration for his paintings came from the covers of 1940s and 50s Pulp Fiction paperbacks. So there's a kind of nostalgic, seamy, hot, sexy side to these. Anyway, that's Walter Robinson. 80s paintings at Metro Pictures. Mr. Robinson. What are you doing? Here, let's stand we caught up with Walter Jeff. Robinson let's here. We're on the, the roof. Jeff Coons. And, uh, <laughs> Look at that big Eddie Gray. I wanted to congratulate you on your show at Metro Pictures, and I got a couple of questions for you. Yes. These are paintings from the 80s. That's right. And you were a big mover back there in the East Village scene. And what thousands of uh, fans want to know is, are you still painting? Are you doing a Duchamp on us? Do you have a yes, secret I studio am. someplace hidden away and you're still yes, working I badly? Am. I am. Are we going to get a chance to see these? The sense is that if my st when my stock runs low, I have to produce more to replenish the stock. That's my approach. Okay. You know what I mean? Does anybody know where the secret location of the uh, the, the uh, brain trust for all this is going on at? You mean 
your secret studio where you've got the masterpieces you're working on after hours. After okay, just upstairs. upstairs. All right. Anyway, congratulations on the show. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you to say. And I think that uh, I there are a lot bite. of. Oh. I hate to bite Jeff Koons opening here. With some well, yeah, but myself, you know what? You know. Painters have got their own little thing going here. So anyway, congratulations, Rob he Walter. <laughs> He's looking at you enviously. Well, I wanted to thank Walter Robinson for his uh, statement. He took the time out to give us. Well, we're gonna dodge into Captain Brown Enterprises here at 620 Grand Street and take a look at Elizabeth Payton. We'll take a quick sweep of the installation here. Now. <clears throat> not so much that I think uh, Walter Robinson influenced Elizabeth Payton, but I think it does show Walter's prescience that he sort of uh, was able to foretell this kind of uh, sensibility. It says flowers and Diaghilev, which is a reference to the great Russian ballet producer. Another small piece it was 13 by 9. It was a portrait of Daghilov. He was very famous for working with Picasso and Hongri and many of the other early modernists. As you can see, most of the scale of these is tiny to small. Now, this kind of recalls one of Walter's pieces. This is called The Age of Innocence. We'll get up and take a little closer look. You can see that uh, Elizabeth really does play with a lot of very transparent color, very thinly painted. This is on panel. Looks like she builds up a pretty heavy layer of primer and then sands that down to a very glossy finish so she can slide that paint around. This is Patty at home. And this kind of work recalls Fairfield Porter. Oh. One of the other things that Elizabeth does, she does a lot of superstars. This is a Matthew Barney portrait called Matthew in March, 2008. Let's do a pretty good job with the details on the face there and the hands. Here's another one of her fan portraits. This is Bob Dylan, 1965. But in this case, it almost looks more like Kate Blanchett playing Bob Dylan. This is Darren. Twelve and a half by eight inches. And this is the quality that she is uh, admired for. looking character. This is NYC. This is nine by six inches. You could take this home in your pocket. But that little face in the corner is uh, pretty cubistic. So. This is John Giorno. Now John was supposedly the character that Andy Warhol filmed for sleep. Now this is his second 15 minutes of fame. That's a quick run through of Elizabeth Payton. Gavin Brown Enterprises on Greenwich Street. Thanks, Kate. 
Alice Neal, 1931.